Stay to our souls, cleanse our bodies, order our minds, purify our thoughts, and deliver us from all affliction, evil, and sickness. Comfort us about with your holy angels that guard and guide us by their legions. We may reach the mystery of faith and the knowledge of your unapproachable glory. For you are blessed in the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious than the hair than the seraphim. Without defilement, you give birth to God the Word. Truth be to the Most Great Magnus by you. In the name of the Lord, Father blessed. The prayer of the Holy Lord and Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save God on us. Amen. O oh, Master and Lord, you have served our gods and our long suffering for our sins. You have led us to this present hour in which hangs upon the life breaking tree. You open to the wise seek the gates of paradise and destroy death by death. Cleanse us, sinners, and unworthy servants, for we have sinned and transgressed and are not worthy to lift up our eyes and look upon the height of heaven. Since we have forsaken the path of your righteousness and have walked according to the desires of our own hearts, but we entreat your boundless goodness. Bear us, O Lord, according to the abundance of your mercy, and save us for your holy name's sake. For our days have been consumed with vanity. Pluck us from the hand of the adversary, forgive us our sins, and mortify our fleshly lusts, that having put off the old man, we may put on the new and may live through you, our master and benefactor, and thus following your commandments, we may reach eternal rest and the abode for all our rejoicing. For you are indeed the true joy and gladness of those who love you, Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory, together with your Father who is without beginning, and your most holy good and life saving spirit, now and ever and unto the age of ages. Amen. In thy kingdom, remember us, O Lord, and our cross in thy kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall seek knowledge. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. The heavenly choir sings thy praises, crying, Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Draw near to him and be enlightened, and your faces shall not be ashamed. The heavenly choir sings thy praises, crying, Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. <coughs> The choir of angels and archangels with all the hosts of heaven sings thy praises, crying, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Loose, remit, and pardon, O God, our sins, both voluntary and involuntary, in thought, word, or deed, in knowledge, or in ignorance, committed by day or by night, of the mind or of the intention. Forgive them all, for thou art good and the lover of mankind. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. With his hands, the betrayer receives the bread. With his hands he secretly receives the silver, the price of him who fashioned man with his hands. So the servant and deceiver Judas remains to pray. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. O most holy Trinity, mighty one in essence, kingdom undivided, the cause of all good, have mercy even on me, a sinner. Confirm and instruct my heart and take away from me every defilement. 
Enlighten my mind that I may ever glorify, praise, and adore thee, saying, One is holy, one is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs>
You make darkness and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do move. The young lions roar after their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun arises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how magnified are your works and wisdom you have made them all. The earth is filled with your creation. Behold the sea, great and wide, which are teeming things innumerable, living things, both small and great. There go the ships and that leviathan which you fashioned and played therein. These all look to you that you may give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. May my words be pleasing to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed out of the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The sun knows his time for setting. He makes darkness and it is night. O oh Lord, how magnified are your works and wisdom you have made them all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. In peace, the spirit of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of our God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy church of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our metropolitan deacon, for our archbishop Nathaniel, for the honorable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Abbess, Mother Christophora, and for the sisterhood of this holy monastery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have that we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious name, the Apostles and the Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves to each other, and all our life unto Christ our God. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
you for myself in company with men who work in equity. Allow me not be joined in that. Let the righteous chasten me with mercy and rebuke me, but let the will of the wicked never anoint my head. I direct my prayer against their desires, their judges, and it's all out of my rock. They hear my words, for they are sweet. For the love of the birds are shining on the ground, so should the bones be scattered before the mouth of hell. O oh Lord, Lord, my eyes are upon you, and that my hope did not reject my soul. Keep me from the sin of mercy and pain for me, and from the drafts of the evil doers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, while I pass by in safety. I call to the Lord with my voice, with my voice to the Lord, I made my supplication. I pour out my prayer before him, my prayer before him, my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then he knew my path. In the path where I walk, they seek to lay a snare for me. I look to the right and watch the knowing that he knew me. I have no refuge, no one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Lord, and said, You are my hope and my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my prayer, my brother, and oh, deliver me from the persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, and I may pray for you. <clears throat>
assembly of the Jews gathers together to signify <coughs> that the maker and creator of all, what lawlessness, what faithlessness, the judge of the living and the dead, they prepare for judgment, the healer of suffering, they prepare for suffering. Oh, how great is thy mercy. Oh, long-suffering Lord, glory to thee. From the morning watch until the night watch, from the morning watch until Israel goes. The transgressor Judas, O Lord, dipped his hand in the plate with thee at supper, but now he unlawfully stretches forth his hand for silver. He calculated the price of the woman to her, yet he does not shudder in selling thee the priceless one. He let the master wash his feet, yet he deceitfully kisses him and betrayeth the lawless men. Cast out from the ranks of the apostles, <coughs> cast away the thirty pieces of silver, not seeing the resurrection of the third day, by it have mercy on us. So with the Lord there is mercy and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall sure give Israel from one of them. <coughs> Judas, the treacherous deceiver, with a deceitful kiss, betrayed the Lord and Savior. He sold the master as a slave to lawless men, and the Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, the only great and merciful one, was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise him, all peoples. Servant and deceiver, disciple and betrayer, friend and devil, Judas has been revealed by his deeds. While following the master, he plotted his betrayal. He said to himself, I shall betray him and gain the purse. He sought to have the mercy sold, and by deceit to have Jesus seized. He gave the kiss and gave up the price. But like a sheep led to the slaughter, so was the only compassionate lover of mankind. For his mercy is confirmed on us, and the truth of the Lord abides forever. The Lamb whom Isaiah proclaimed goes willingly to the slaughter. He gives his back to scourging his cheeks to buffeting. He does not turn his face from the shame of spitting. He is condemned to a shameful death. He who grants sinless. He who is sinless willingly submits to all to grant to all the resurrection from the dead. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it. It takes on form like clay under a seal, and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea, or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place that you may take it to its territory? that you may know the paths to its home. Do you know it because you were born then, or because the number of your days is great? Have you entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything, and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. <laughs> the reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? who walks in darkness and has no light, yet trusts in the name of the Lord and relies upon his God. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who set brands alight, walk by the light of your fire and by the brands which you have kindled. This you shall have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. Again and again, people the Help us, he helps have mercy on us and keep us in God. What I grieve. Lord, have mercy. Remembering your most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious faith, and most of the virgin Mary, all the saints, let's yes, commend yourself to each other of our life unto Christ our God.
seventh throne, the rulers of the people have assembled against <coughs> the Lord and his Christ. Saying, Why this waste? 
when this ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain one and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, Jesus sat at table with his twelve disciples. And knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, Jesus rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel which with he was girded. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and that was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And as they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? Jesus said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took a cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter declared to him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, 
Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go yonder and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then Jesus said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And there appeared to Jesus an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down upon the ground. And getting up from prayer, Jesus came to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again for the second time he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I, unless I drink it, thy will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, Jesus went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going, see my betrayers at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs, and the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Hail, Master. And Judas kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why are you here? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter followed him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the elders and the whole council sought false testimony against Jesus, that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it these men testify against you? But Jesus was silent, and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you hereafter, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard now his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and the maid came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the porch, another maid saw him, she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again Peter denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, 
the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you also are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the cock crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death, and they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Despite all of that, uh, God sends his son into the world to save the world. This is this amazing generosity, hospitality, offering. Uh, that's the first thing to always keep in mind. But the second is, there's also this other side of the fear of God that's expressed in uh, so many ways in the different readings in the service. Uh, there's this, this Exodus story the flaming, the mountain, and smoke, and don't touch the mountain, and don't go near your wives, and there's a the real strong element of uh, the fear of God. Uh, in the epistle, St. Paul talking about communion, uh, the tradition that he received, already it was a tradition that he received, uh, receiving the communion, take, eat, this is my body, and drinking, all of you, this is my blood. He received that. And then he says, and that's the generosity. And then he says, be careful that you not be unworthy when you receive. And this tension has been, is, can sometimes be a temptation in, in a, the life of our church, even. Uh, I'm unworthy. I can't receive communion. Uh, I haven't prepared enough. I can't receive communion. Uh, I have sinned. I can't receive communion. This tension between the fear of God and the generosity that's offered us uh, produces, produces uh, questions in our own life. So how do we, how do we resolve, resolve this, this tension? Uh, I think we resolve it through the, the, the church's own prayers. If you take the trouble, you probably every, every time you see communion, you're reading the prayers before communion, they, they're able to keep those two things in balance. Uh, let me just take one of them. A prayer of St. Basil the Great. I know, O Lord, that I have communion unworthily of thy most pure body and thy most precious blood, and that I am guilty and drink condemnation to myself, not discerning thy body and blood, but my Christ and God. 
But daring upon thy generous loving kindness, I come to thee, who has said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Be merciful, therefore, Lord, and do not rebuke me, a sinner, but deal with me according to thy mercy. And let thy holy things be for my purification and healing, for enlightenment and protection, for the repulsion of every tempting thought and action of the devil, which works spiritually in my fleshly members. Let them be for boldness and love for thee, for the correction and grounding of my life, for the increase of virtue and perfection, for the fulfillment of thy commandments, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the journey of eternal life, for a good and acceptable answer of thy dread judgment, but not for judgment or condemnation. Amen. The prayers of the Church don't resolve the tension, but they, they recognize that, yes, we are unworthy. Just as at one point Peter said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. The prayers realize that. But at the very same time, they say, Nevertheless, I come forward. Why? Because I trust your word. You said to come forward. You said that even though we're like this, you, you generously offer yourself. Uh, and you want us to be there. So Lord, I ask you to give me this this pouring out of your body and blood for the correction of my own life. And I do it with boldness. And we also have to say, we do this not just symbolically. What's so striking in this, this story of the, 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 the supper, the institution, is that Jesus begins with a symbolic act. Uh, he tells them, this, is my, this, is, this bread is my body, it's a symbol. This is my blood, it's fine. But then what does he do? He does two things. He, show, he demonstrates to them what it means to, to give yourself up. He washes their feet. But that too is a symbol. Uh, you know, sitting at dinner, he washes feet. Uh, could be taken symbolically. Uh, although it's a bit, it's an action. But then, then he really shows. Then he really shows. He then goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he's betrayed, he's arrested, he's tortured, he's crucified, and he does it all willingly for those who were disciples who were afraid, himself, they ran away, they all forsook him. That's when he really shows, this is what it is. This is the Eucharist. This is the real Eucharist. You know, it's, it's hard to imagine being here uh, only three weeks ago, while the tongue was right, right there. Um, one of the constant themes in his teaching is that we are to become the Eucharist. If we are disciples of Christ, we are to become ourselves the Eucharist. Not just symbolically receiving it uh, in sacramentally, but our life, our body, our pouring out of ourselves for one another in service, in real service, not just metaphorical, symbolic service, but real sacrificial, pouring out. This is a constant theme in, in Father Tom's uh, talk, uh, talks. So, um, may we, on this day, as we partake of that Eucharist, come forward in the, in, the, in the fear of God, and with faith and love, with the desire that that Eucharist we receive from a generous God who loves us, would be to us for the transformation of our souls and body, the healing of our souls and bodies, and to enable us to become ourselves a Eucharist for others. Amen. <laughs>
for all the clergy and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Can we pray for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces? Can we pray for our Abbess Mother Christian Flora, for the Sisterhood of this Holy Monastery, for their health and salvation? Can we pray for the blessed and ever memorable Holy Earth God's Patriarchs and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of the Holy Church and for the court and servants of God, for the Presbyter Thomas, Catherine, Adeline, George, Simon, Helen, Nina, Aurelia, Michael, William, Islamatia, and for all our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, the Orthodox who part this night before us, and all those who are here in all the world by us sleep in the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Can we pray for mercy, light, peace, health, salvation, visitation, for the sake and suffering servants of God, Archpriest Roscoe, Archpriest John, Archpriest Elia, Matushka Juliana, Matushka Barbara, Julia, Julius, Marvin, Susan, Sharon, Kayla, Anthony, Kiriam, John, Paul, Brian, Zitera, Donna, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Can we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and authentical house, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present to go away to thy grave and rich mercy. Thou art a merciful God who loves mankind, and unto thee we send our glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray to the Lord your catechumens. Let us be faithful, pray for the catechumens, that the Lord may have mercy on them, that he may teach them the word of truth. That he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness. Lord, have mercy. That he may unite them to his holy Catholic and apostolic church. Lord, have mercy. Help them, save them, have mercy on them, and keep them, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Bow your heads unto the Lord, your catechumens. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That with us they may glorify thine all honorable and majestic. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. All catechumens depart, depart catechumens, all that are catechumens depart, so that let no catechum remain. Let us the faithful again and again in peace pray unto the Lord. Mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Amen. For unto thee are to all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace.
offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy temple and for those who enter with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord,
one master, the Lord God, all the Almighty, and adorable. It is truly meet and right and befitting the magnificence of thy holiness to praise thee, to sing to thee, to bless thee, to worship thee, to give thanks to thee, to glorify the only truly existing God, and to offer to thee this our reasonable worship with a contrite heart and a spirit of humility. For thou hast granted us the knowledge of thy truth. Who can utter thy mighty acts or make all thy praises known? Or tell of all thy miracles at all times. O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, both visible and invisible, incomprehensible, indescribable, changeless. O Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, the seal of thy very likeness, showing forth in himself thee, O Father, the living word, the true God, the eternal wisdom, the life, the sanctification, the power, the true light through whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal blessings, the life-creating power, the fountain of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships thee, and always sings to thee a hymn of glory. For all things are thy servants. Thou art praised by angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and many I cherubim, Round about thee stand the seraphim, one with six wings and the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying one to another, with unceasing voices and never resounding praises, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying. Christ himself, 
He lived in this world and gave us commandments of salvation, releasing us from the delusions of idolatry. He brought us the knowledge of Thee, the true God and Father. He obtained us for His own chosen people, a royal priest and a holy nation. Having cleansed us in water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, He gave Himself as a ransom to death, in which we were held captive, sold under sin, descending through the cross into hell, that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the pangs of death. He arose on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be a victim of corruption. So he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be himself truly the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he will come to render to every man according to his works. And as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary and ever memorable and life breathing death, in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and pure hands. Having shown it to thee, the God and Father, having given thanks, blessed and hallowed it and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Likewise, he took the cup and the fruit of the vine, Having mingled it and given thanks, blessed and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, you confess my resurrection. Therefore, we also, Master, remembering his saving passion, life giving cross, his three day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and sitting at the right hand of the God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. Thine own, of thine own. We offer unto thee, on behalf of all, and for Instead, may we find mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have been well pleasing to thee. 
ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith, especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious faith, Theotokos, and never virgin Mary. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God. 
who now has given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may praise thy law, honorable, majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ shall be with all of you. Let 
Reading of a homily on Regent Holy Thursday, Father John Beer. Can you drink the cup that I am to drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am will be baptized? So we heard Christ asking the disciple in the gospel reading a few Sundays ago, when they said that they had left everything behind and asked to be seated at the right and left hand in his kingdom. Now today we come to the cup, and with hymns we are singing, we ur urge us to ascend with our minds on high to the upper chamber, so that we may receive the Master's hospitality, the banquet of immortality, receiving the exalted words of the word in a feast of theology. So let us ascend. We have been preparing ourselves for this 40, for 40 days now and more, not so that we can approach the cup of immortality thinking ourselves worthy of it. If we approach the chalice with such an attitude, we have missed the point. Rather, we have been preparing ourselves so that our minds and our hearts may be raised on high, above all the concerns which usually drag us down, so that we might know what is involved in this mysterious supper, what it means to partake of the food which comes from above. For the banquet that we celebrate today is not merely a fellowship meal, or simply a repetition or reenactment of a meal that took place some 2,000 years ago. A return to the past before the cross, trying to reestablish the fellowship the disciples had with him before other events intervened, as if they had never happened, going back to all the hopes and longings they had had, wanting to share in this glory, but not realizing what cup it is that they asked to share, wanting to be on his right hand and on his left when he comes in his glory, but not realizing that this is to be crucified with him. No, it cannot be this, for the heavenly food that we are about to receive is the body and blood of Christ himself, the Paschal Lamb. We must raise our minds on high and search for a loftier contemplation. We heard in the epistle that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that Jesus took the bread and the cup. The hymnography for today makes much of the figure of Judas, who out of love for money betrayed the Lord of all, the giver of all good gifts. With his mind set not on high, but on the things of this world, Judas was not able to receive the gift that God Christ offers. And even when he realized his error, he saw no possibility other than taking his own life. Yet if Judas betrayed Christ, the chief of the apostles, <coughs> Peter the rock, upon whom Christ builds his church, while warming himself beside some burning coals, denies Christ three times or less, even after saying that he would rather die than do this. In Peter's case, however, this was not the end. The risen Christ will appear to Peter, again by some burning coals, and ask Peter three times if he loves him, challenging Peter to acknowledge what he has done. The burning coals bring to our mind the burning coal brought from the altar to Isaiah, who acknowledged his sinfulness when confronted by the Lord, enthroned in glory, and he and hears the words. Behold, this has touched her lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sins are forgiven. Only when the disciple acknowledges his failure, his own role in the death of Christ, only then can this failure be brought to a good outcome rather than a destructive ending. Only in this way can he be brought back into fellowship with Christ, no longer as Simon, but as Peter, knowing the forgiveness of God and able as an apostle of God's forgiveness to preach this to others. All meals with the risen Christ have this element of transformation, entering in communion with Christ. It is a fellowship that, having been denied, is now revealed to be of greater depth than previously imagined. The Eucharist is not simply a reenactment of a past Passover meal. It recalls the Last Supper, but also the betrayal on the cross, and it does so as the Paschal Feast, the banquet of immortality, in which we partake of his body to become not simply companions, that is, sharers in bread, but to become his body. If then we are going to partake of this meal, we must also acknowledge our own responsibility for the death of Christ. If we do not recognize him as our own victim, then we will not be able 
he will not be able to be our Savior. It is precisely with this prayer that we approach the cup that Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. With this prayer, <clears throat> our minds, and with this prayer, our minds are led to ascend yet one step higher. In the fear of God, in faith and love, draw near. Blessed is he that comes to the name of the Lord. God is the Lord, and has revealed O God, save thy people and bless thy name inheritance. <laughs>
have created in us the mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Amen. Thank you, Lord our God, for the participation in thy holy, most pure, immortal, and heavenly mysteries. If thou hast granted us for the good and sanctification and healing of our souls and bodies, do thou, O Master of all, grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of thy Christ may be to us for a faith unashamed, a love unfeigned, an increase of wisdom, the healing of soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the observing of thy commandments and an acceptable defense at the dread, dread judgment seat of thy Christ. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. sanctifies those who trust in thee, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house, glorify them in return by thy divine power, and forsake us not for our hope in thee, give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to thy priests, to all those in civil authority, and to all thy people, for every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights. Then unto thee we send up glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Oh, blessed be the name of the Thy holy things. 
I thank thee for thou hast permitted me to be unworthy to commune with thy most pure and heavenly gifts. But O oh, Master, love us mankind, and for our sakes the sky and rise again, and gave us us these awesome and life giving mysteries, for the good and sanctification of our souls and bodies. Let them be for the healing of our soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the illumining of the eyes of my heart. The peace of my spiritual powers, the faith and the shame, the love and pain, the fulfilling of wisdom, the observing of thy commandments, the receiving of thy divine grace, and the attaining of thy kingdom. Preserve by them and thy holiness, may I always remember thy grace and live not for myself alone, but for thee, our master and benefactor. May I pass from this life of hope and eternal life.